GM, 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 everybody. Well, we're back on Twitch with a special, special, uh, special stream. It's also a stream that's, um, yeah, we wanted to do an extra stream about the Decentraland wearables uh, because, of course, last week we had our, we had our uh, WoW Fashion Fest in Decentraland. So that's a, a three-day festival where we uh, build our own space together with Realty uh, and uh, World of Women, of course. Uh, and we had all kind of events there and you could wear your um, uh, World of Women uh, wearables. Uh, and in this uh, stream, we wanted to show you how to create your own wearables for uh, Decentraland. Um, and also, this is also a special moment because this is the first stream. Um, how can I explain that perfectly? This is the first stream that we're kicking off the Fabricant Academy. And with the F Academy, uh, we're going to do monthly streams explaining things on Twitch. And then two weeks later, uh, we're going to do a workshop on Discord. Uh, where you can show your progress uh, and we can help you answer questions or if you're stuck, uh, then we can help you out on Discord uh, with, a, uh, uh, with a conversation over there. But without further ado, I have two uh, other people sitting besides me here uh, during the Twitch stream. That's uh, Nell, uh, our uh, one and only uh, senior digital fashion designer. And we have a special guest, James Gart. How are you both? Good, 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 good to be here. Yeah, nice. Uh, and uh, and to kick it off, uh, James, do you want to do a little introduction about yourself? Like, tell us a bit what what you do, who you are. Yeah. Um. So, I'm kind of more or less like a 3D generalist. Um. I started in film in television. And then I moved over to video games, and um, the last couple of projects I've worked on was The Last of Us 2, Halo, and Spider-Man. And nice. I kind of, like, started taking a liking to, like, making, like, metaverse wearables. And so I started making some of my own, and then I think mostly now, like, I'm more exclusive to kind of, like, making um, wearables for other companies, like the Fabricant and other clients that I have. And, yeah, that's me. Cool. Super nice. Super nice that you're here. And also now I did already a short introduction, but can you also give an introduction of who you are, what you do at yeah. Fabricant? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a senior designer with the Fabricant working in the fashion design team. So I come from more of a traditional fashion design background rather than a 3D or games design background. Um, that's how I entered 3D was through actually close 3D and like working uh, turning my traditional practice into a 3D one. Um, and then I got more involved in different aspects of 3D from getting into Blender and Substance and everything else. So yeah, really now completely into digital fashion design. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. And uh, maybe you have seen me before, but I'm uh, Jeroen, um, community coordinator, operator. Sometimes you see me in front of, of the camera like this or behind the camera, or in Discord, or in Decentraland, everywhere. Um, but super cool to be here. Uh, now, maybe you can uh, start with uh, with the agenda for today. I already get, did a little kickoff, but maybe explain a little bit further what we're going to do uh, today. Yeah, I mean, we're going to look at kind of transitioning from Core 3D into um, optimizing that for Decentraland. Um, or at least my way of working, a uh, one method that we kind of use for one of the wearables, and then um, James will discuss more of his approach um, and some more of the technicalities involved that we kind of don't touch on in Core 3D as a Core 3D designer. When you get into Blender, there's a much more technical approach we need to take. Um, and then I think you can explain to the community kind of how that then gets approved by Decentraland to be Definitely. wearable in Decentraland because that's also a process um, so that it can actually be active in the world and be worn and sold and everything. So yeah, um, we'll kind of try to cover those three bases today. Um, Definitely, yeah. Share my screen. Cool. Uh, and also, um, I already said it, but this is the first educational TF Academy event that we're doing. And by the end of the stream, we're giving away a float and if you collect that float, you have um, really fast. Uh, 
No. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and with that float, uh, you can have access to some closed channels in our Discord. So definitely uh, collect that float by the end of the stream. There we are. Boom. So I'm going to talk to you guys about this piece today and kind of how we have to break we broke this down to get it from like this high quality output into um, in the end Decentraland. So this was the the render from the fashion team, and then this was kind of the process that we had to take. So just in steps, we kind of have to look at the filing flow and get it into a pose that matches the the skeleton of Decentraland. Um, reduce its complexity quite a lot because we need a really, really low poly model and then remesh this model to then get it into uh, Blender. So these steps I'll kind of be able to talk about um, in some detail and then I'll hand it over to James and he can discuss some of the other steps and the models that he's worked on from a different collection. Um, but then the process will kind of go through uh, the bone system, skinning, the, the mesh, the weights, um, and reapplying like projecting the textures to then kind of get a twin point of some of the high quality uh, models that we had in the And then these were some of the test shots. So this is kind of the process we went through or that I went through for this one and um, to get this guy into Decentraland. So um, yeah, I'll start to talk to you guys about the core files because the setup is quite different, I guess. So this was our um, high resolution file. Um, this is what we use for the final renders and for the final texturing of the image that I just showed you guys. Um, and obviously this, if we looked at the mesh, it's a really, really fine mesh, lots of detail, lots of gathers, lots of uh, detail in the trims and everything. Um, but this is far too much um, information for us to get into Decentraland. So we really had to reduce um, some of this detail and then try and project it back into the textures. But even with the texturing, um, there's limitations on the size of textures. So there's limitations on the amount of detail you can project across. Um, but yeah, this was our final asset that was produced in Clo, um, in the pose on the avatar that was developed by the team. Um, and yeah, this is, like I said, quite a high resolution output. And what we needed to do was... Um, what was the resolution? Do you know? By the, by the top? It, I, The people who are wondering uh, yeah i think this is working like a, a particle distance of five so people who are familiar with clo this is quite um yeah it could be even finer if we needed it to be but this worked quite well for what we needed particle distance uh, five. yeah cool and then this is reduced quite a bit i think already to 15. um so still less faces than before a lot less um resolution but still high. Um, so I've also repositioned the Garmin into like a symmetrical pose that matches the um, the original armature and the original avatar from uh, Decentraland. So when I open Blender, I'll show you those kind of um, armatures together. So you can see why we try to align this jacket as much as we can to the Decentraland avatar to get a, a nice proportional representation of, of this Garmin. Um, but still, um, it's too high poly for Decentraland. Um, it's a lot less polygons than before. So we go one more time down to this, which I think is now about 20 particle distance. So again, if you guys are working with Clue, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but still too high, really, to get into Decentraland. Um, Still fewer, and this time it's converted to quads to try and reduce the total face count, but still it didn't um, get us where we needed to be. And again, a lot of the detail is lost in the, the mesh at this point, and we will lose more. Um, but again, that's kind of, I guess, the aesthetic of Decentraland is this um, low poly resolution. And more than anything, we're trying to preserve the way the garment sits, the way the garment folds around the neck, and the, the volume and proportion of the sleeves, so that when it comes in, at least it has the same feeling in the same attitude that it has in the render and in the high quality output as it does in the in this low poly metaverse. Um, yeah. So it's trying to preserve as much of that as we could. Um, so yeah, these were the three 
kind of phases I went through to get this guy over here. Yeah. And then I will show you guys in Blender. So this is the kind of default um, avatar and setup for a decentralized wearable. So it's kind of broken down into the skeleton, which is what um, we can move the joints and the bones and everything to create poses and animations. And then there's different regions of the body where we can create different wearables for. So upper body, lower body, feet, uh, like mouth, eyes, head, like to be specific on, you know, if you want to create different eye details, different mouth details, different facial details, this can all be broken down. Um, and what we really wanted here was the upper body. So um, a lot of what is useful with this is we can copy some of the joint information and weight information onto the the model that we produce um, in order to make it um, be able to animate and be able to move and it look um, quite natural. Um, there's still some work to be done by hand, but this this is available from Decentraland. So you can go and they have a folder um, available. I'm just looking for the folder now. You can download a format from Decentraland. Yeah, so there's male references, female references, yeah, exactly. um, textures, everything that you kind of need to, to look and kind of inspect a file and see how things work is there. So you can download that from their website. So you know, um, you can access all these base models that I'm using here as well. That's yeah. that's accessible to anybody. And, and why do you use uh, Blender? Well, is that your preferred software or like? For me, it is just because I have knowledge in Blender, but also a lot of the documentation from Decentraland is done uh, using Blender as an example. So I think um, it's a lot easier to follow the instructions step by step if you need to follow any of their tutorials or anything. Um, I believe it's in Blender. I hope I'm saying yeah. that right. Yeah, and Blender um, for free. That's also a big, uh, big thing. Exactly. Oh, somebody... I mean, it's, it's kind of <laughs> available to anybody at, at this point. It's, it's free. So, um, you know, you don't need to pay to access this. And there's this kind of joke that you could run Blender on a toaster because it, it will work on any computer. It might not work to the best of like its ability, but you could still open it up and probably look at files and do something without having to render or simulate anything if you've got. You hey, know, now, uh, people in the chat say that your mouse click is really uh, close to the mic, like that it's really like oh. a knife in your ear. <laughs> Oh no! Can, can we? Can we? Can you? I don't know where. I don't know where to move it to. Maybe let me... like to save people's ears. Wait, let me see if I can do it. Right. I'll use this pen. Is this better? Yeah. I. I yeah. Does everyone have... Chat. Is this <laughs> Sorry better? for that. I hope this is better. Um. Ah. So yeah. Nice. Blender. Um. I exported this guy um, as a thin mesh I think, here. And, and you'll see that it sits quite closely to the, um, the, the base, like upper body um, mesh of the decentral end. Mm -hmm. But I think if we still look at the, at the poly count, there's still a lot of, um, of polygons so there is a guideline and i can't quite remember what it is but um of how many triangles a, a maximum a mesh can have so um that's worth checking so that you know like what your limit is per wearable because otherwise it won't get accepted i think into the the test that you need to take it in after it's um, uh, generally 1500 tries 1500 there you go as like a maximum per uh gallon i think um, so what I did then is I used an add-on to kind of remesh this jacket into a much less polygons. Um, it still doesn't fit exactly onto the avatar's body. As you see, like there's still areas where it's collided, but this now has kind of the right amount of triangles to fit, um, into decentral. And I think if I cut all these guys off, it should be enough. Um, and then I just used the sculpt mode to just adjust this and fit it around the uh, avatar so it fits into that kind of the right space. 
Um, and then, yeah, this was this was set up then. So we kind of had a, a base mesh that we could then transfer the weights and the, the bones to, which I had an example of here. So I'm going to have to click. I'm sorry. My apologies to everybody. Um, this was when we kind of uh, added the texture and fixed the weights. So if I just kind of scroll through here. Um, now the guy is kind of rigged. It works. We, you know, I tested some movements um, and it gets tested in some animations when we upload it into Decentraland. Um, and we know that this now um, works. There's obviously a process to transfer the, the textures and this type of thing. But um, yeah, that's uh, much more detail than I guess we have time for today. But that's a quick run through of how I um, approach getting something from Clo really down into resolution and into, um, into Blender. Do you want me to hand it over to you, James, at this point? Uh, there's one question uh, in the chat, and I'm not sure if I explained it well, but I'm just reading it out loud. Some yeah. people, before exporting the file from Clo, they changed triangle to quadrant mesh. Uh, did you make that too? Uh, on this one, it was exported as quads, yeah. But it, it doesn't really matter because, like I said, um, it needed to be remeshed from this quad mesh from Clo, reduced again from this amount of triangles to a much lower amount. Yeah. Um, and I did that with a, a little like remeshing tool called Instant Meshes that you just input one geometry and then it will output a lower resolution for you based on the kind of parameters that you use cool but it's better to work in triangles i would say in general because decentraland will want you to put triangles in there okay okay good note good note yeah. am i taking over now I think so, yeah. Um, should I stop sharing at this point? Yeah, you can just stop sharing and then uh, James will share it. Cool. All right, here we go. All right, can you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. So this is, um, I made 12 wearables for what is this collection stephanie fun collection yeah stephanie, yeah let's move them away from each other so we can kind of get a better look at them Sorry, I should have done this sooner. All right, we can take a look at these. So these are all, um, since I didn't get like the uh, source Clo files for these, um, these are all hand modeled inside of Blender. And so that's just kind of like the, the routine poly model kind of thing, right? And not um, pattern making, say. And the way that this kind of starts out, so, I would kind of trace out what the character kind of needs, right? And you'll see that stuff is a little hollow. So like this jacket doesn't have like a double side on it, right? So eventually I'll have to come in, probably add like a solidify modifier on it. So it gives a little bit of a thickness to it, right? And so I kind of just trace out like here, let me show you like making just like the armband stuff. Like, if you have something that's, like, skin tight, right, you could oftentimes just kind of steal from the other model, like, what the, um, the central land character looks like, right? So if I do... Oh, actually, sorry. We'll do the circle select. That makes, like, 
life so much easier. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> nice. What's it called? Loops. Yeah, so if you do over here with like the selections and you hold down, you have like a couple different options. You have tweak, select box, um, select circle, and lasso, right? Yep. And like the select circle is really nice. So like when I get like um, a selection I like, I'll do like a shift D, which will duplicate it. And then I'll kind of like drop it back in place with like a right click. It's still there. Like, so if I hit G and move it, it's there. But it like right clicking will bring it back to its origin point and not move it. And then I would go to, where is that? Mesh, split, and then split by selection. Oh no, that's not right. Separate, sorry, separate by selection. And I'll create a new mesh that sits basically on top of it. Let's see here. All right, here it is. And so if I go in here and kind of edit stuff on it, the other part. So, you know, you see I have like a little gap here, right? Mm -hmm. I'll probably come in and fill it, like I extrude it, you know, old school box modeling. Okay. Kind of snap it into place. Fill that in, and so now I have kind of something that mimics like a line, right? Instead of like that gap that was there. Mm -hmm. And then after that's done, I can put a solidify on it, and kind of make it a little bit thicker. And so now you'll see that I'll have like you know an armband that kind of like sits on top of the on top of the model, right? Some of the normals. Always remember to fix your normals, or else your model will look weird. <laughs> <laughs> so then reset. Oop. Oh, I don't have the right thing selected. Oh, that's right, because it's not actually actually geometry yet. Because I have like the solidify modifier in it. So you gotta apply it. So now it's actually geometry. Mm -hmm. Mesh, normals, preset vectors. And so, you know, now I have like the armband thing, right? So if you want to make something like pants, it's slightly the same kind of like idea. So if I just delete that, delete this, and then um, wireframe. So that's kind of roughly where, where I would like select for like what pants are. And then I do shift D to duplicate it, drop it back in its place. And then I'll do a separate again, my selection. And so now I have something that resembles pants. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and then I would start like cleaning this up from here. And what that would mean is like kind of like dragging things into kind of place to like shape like the the belt line. Yeah. And anything that looks like this, I start merging that together. Same like this, we don't need a belly button or pants. You can fill this. And so then from here, I would probably do the displace modifier on it. Kind of like help. Oh, that's right. You have to be out of the, you have to be in the object view. Yeah, and you see like the displace will start like puffing it out a little bit, right? Yeah. And so like you can kind of figure out like where, where you want it to kind of sit on the model, right? 
and then you would go into kind of where is that sculpt mode and then uh, from here i would start kind of like you know reshaping what i think the the pants should look like right obviously i don't want like skin tight calves on the on this and then so you kind of smooth calves, and play. Uh, some sports calves <laughs> This guy has been uh, working out a lot. <laughs> and so I kind of go through like this, right? I kind of start shaping it. You know, I don't have to show you completely. Maybe less refined butt here. And then from here, right, you know, I have something that resembles pants. Obviously, I'd take a little more time to do this. Um, and then from here, I would start looking at, like, the, the actual model that I have that's supplied. And I would start kind of deleting stuff that wasn't needed, right? So with this, I would probably actually go to the front view, get change the selection, select box, and probably start deleting any of the skin that's about right here, right? Mm -hmm. By that right there, and then hit X, and then delete faces. Then you get something that's, you know, Looks like a little jack-o'-lantern or whatever and then i'd come in back to the pants oh actually hold on since we have a display modifier we're going to have to collapse that so we'll apply that so that it doesn't pop back and forth when i change um you'll also notice, notice that i'm using symmetry as well So it's like whatever I do on one side happens to the other side. Um, there's some plugins that you can get that kind of like do some of this stuff like a little better than this. I don't know if I typically like the mirror modifier because you end up getting stuff like this, right? And then this is a lot of like manual work that you have to kind of go back in. Like you select each vertice and then you zero out the X and it kind of spits it back to the center, right? So Typically, this is what I would normally do, but I found another plugin that kind of just like mirrors stuff by hitting like a hotkey. It's so now it's like all mirrored on one side. So if I just delete, delete this modifier, you'll see that like anything I do here. Oh, okay, so that works. So certain things don't inside of item or tools, right? You can do like a mirror, and like if you move stuff right it will actually propagate to the other side because this is actual geometry now i'm not using the modifier mm -hmm. but if you use something like a knife tool right if i cut this here if i needed like a cut right yeah this doesn't propagate to the other side which is super annoying um and then like you have to do some like fancy stuff you either have to delete this and kind of clone it over but there's another plugin i think it's mesh machine and it has a modifier that you just like hit alt x and then you pick the side and then it just copies it over okay. like that oh yeah um i'll figure out what that is exactly because i think it's mesh machine oh i mean this might be a good place to make a pocket like some of the models have pockets in them yeah let's see yeah like this and i can kind of show you like my approach for making like pockets here since we have yeah, that cool. Cool. open so with this, I would kind of start tracing out where I think like a pocket would be with like just the knife tool. And I would kind of select the area. And I would hit E for extrude. And I'd create an extrusion from that. And then I kind of like start shaping it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if I want like the little pocket or the little flap, I'll start creating like little bits of geometry like this on there. And then, I mean, this doesn't look all that nice, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, for a quick, uh, for a quick show. It's really good. You can really make it pop. By going to edge, 
and Mark Sharp. So now you'll see that the normals kind of make it look like it's like a flat surface in certain areas, right? And so if you never use like Mark Sharp or like stuff like this, this stuff is is amazing to kind of like make stuff look like it's got a little more to it than it does, right? Because you know that's if if I turn off all of that, right? So if I clear sharp, you'll see that like the normals kind of this looks like it's all smooth, right? Yeah. And marking sharp like allows it to have like kind of a step on it, right? And it's like you can see like the normals don't don't smooth. And I, I do that stuff in a lot of different places. I think these kneecaps to kind of accentuate them, like I use it there. I think they're on here. Let me see if I, if I clear it. Yeah. It's much easier to see if I turn off wire ring. Right. So you see like a good example of like the left side and the right side, right? So you can kind of see that there's like a little outline and this stuff will show up in like the central end too. So you'll be able to see like this kind of stuff, right? Oh yeah. Let me get back to this, how I merge the body to this. So from this point, right, when I want to stitch like the body, like let's say your character is shirtless, right? Um, instead of having like geometry inside of the pants, like no geometry in the pants so you can save on like um, polygon count, right? And so from here, like I would hit E on here to extrude it, right? I would drop it back in its place and then I would scale it. So they're like this. Of course, stuff like this always happens. So I would cut this. I'm gonna fix that because we want like a little bit of a lip here. Move that back into place. Thank you there. Okay, so then from here, like now I have kind of like the lip of the pants, actually showing you the Mark Sharp stuff. Oh, okay, so the back is messed up. We'll, I'll just ignore that for now. Here's two. You want like a, like a loop, like around, like, because you want like the whole thing to look like this. Like some of this is messed up right now. It's fine for this. Um, and then I'm going to do mark sharp on it and probably even just kind of like bring it down just a little bit to give it like a little sense of like a lip transition. And then when I go back to the actual model itself, I'll turn back wireframe so I can see what I'm doing. So like from here, I would actually start. connecting the vertices down into the pants. Yeah. And like, so I'll do that the whole way, right? And so now you have like the pants connected to the body and you would do this stuff with like, um, like with anything that kind of needs, um, like, so for example here, For this, like most of this is connected, except for the strap. Like you can see here that um, I do that kind of lip technique on the like um, clothing. Oh, I have stop selection on. And you'll see that the skin and the shirt are connected, right? And you'll see that for almost everything here. So the shirt and pants are connected. Um, this is a good example, of, like what I would do, like with a pocket, right? Um, And like even kind of like these straps, right? They're all built into like the model, right? And I, and as you can see, like a heavily used like the Mark Sharp on these, so that it has like a sense of like it being a strap, and there's like definition between you know like an overlap. What else? Even like this, right? So the belt is built in, like so all of this is built into the model, right? And like nothing is kind of hanging. The only thing that ever kind of hangs ever once in a while, like I'll do that with like uh, sleeves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. No, it's not it. 
There it is. Yeah, so like I'll kind of cheat here and kind of just penetrate like the hand inside of like the inside of the sleeve, right? So I don't have to like model extra, right? Because like here, like I was able to kind of save a little bit on poly count instead of just kind of like connecting everything together. And yeah, um, oh yeah, cool. so the, that's the other thing too. We talk about like texturing, right? Um, Niall already talked about a little bit about weighting, right? And like rigging, so I'll just talk about texturing. So let me see. Let's pick. Um, what's this one called? This one's the boar. Let's open a boar. So I use Substance Painter to do all of the texturing for my models. And so I kind of like built like a shader or not a shader, but a material that kind of does a lot of the work for me. Like I spent a decent amount of time trying to make like a, a material that can kind of be reused over and over again. I think it's this one, the DCL template. Oh, what is, oh, the skin. So upper body. Uh, a few quick questions, uh, Jace, before we go on to the yeah, next topic. Of course. Um, so early on, there was a question about, uh, can you elaborate on why you manually modeled everything from scratch versus relying on a uh, Retopo algorithm to process, uh, to process an input mesh? Oh, it's because I didn't have the source source files. So I just had like a rendered image. So I had to just make it from there. Like typically what I would do, like if I had like the source file, like I would reduce it a bit. Um, and then I would kind of like manually move like vertices into place to make sure I'm getting like the shape right. Um, I mean, I'd rather do like, uh, everything's a little different, right? Because I've had some things where I had the source file and I would do either hand modeling or reduction, right? And it's like, not, a, not every model is like built the same. So sometimes it lends itself better to do that than other times. It just depends. I just, I just didn't have the source file. So I had to rebuild everything from scratch. Cool, 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 cool. And uh, another question, connecting the skin, um, connecting to the skin becomes part of the DC wearable to export. Uh, can I, do I read that right? So if you, if I understand it correctly, uh, if you, connect the skin uh, to the wearable itself, it becomes part of the export. Like, I think yeah. you were talking about the sleeve. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, um, so, yeah, well, one of the important things about, like, the skin stuff, I guess I didn't touch on, it's, um, it's important that you never, like, mess with, but, like, the hand, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is the DCL hand that got lopped off and put into the model that I made, right? And this, you know, this will work because like everything is broken up into, do I have that open? Yeah. All right. So everything is broken up to upper body, lower body, feet, and head, right? And so with this like its skin is there um and also like if you just don't if you don't mess with these things here the vertex group like these will still be weighted and transfer over to anything else you make right mm -hmm. usually i kind of blow all that away and just reskin it for myself because it's sometimes it's not worth like holding on to old data i think that's kind of the question is being asked or yeah 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 correct yeah And then another question. So this workflow never used a clo file to begin with, correct? And did it all uh, and did it all in Blender? When would you recommend this for DC wearable versus going from clo to Blender? When would you recommend it? Is that? I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question. So so um, Nara Binesh is um, is asking. Uh, this workflow never used a clo file to begin with. 
Yeah, uh, no, it didn't. Mm, okay. And uh, you did it all in Blender. Uh, when would you recommend this for DCL wearable? Uh, when would you recommend this for DCL wearable versus going from Clo, uh, a Clo file to Blender to DCL? No. Um, I don't James, know. It's hard to say. You are uh, based in LA, right? It's pretty early for yeah. you for the hard for the hard <laughs> questions right away in the morning. <laughs> I do. I, I got I got my coffee. <laughs> exactly. like sometimes stuff just is easier to go from the kind of the technique that James demonstrated. Like if it's quite close fitting to the body, it just it makes sense to work with the avatar as the basis because a lot of that data is still there. Whereas when you come from a clo file, you really have to start applying all that data again. You have to re-unwrap the, the mesh. You know, you, you do create more work for yourself, but you can preserve details in the shape. So I guess it just depends if the, the shape is quite complex or quite unique, then you might want to use the clo file to help you. And if the shape is quite fit into an avatar's body or um, it lends itself to, to working with a, a mesh like that, then I, I guess you just have to choose the right output. Yeah, it's like it's unfortunately there's no there's no real good like <laughs> like recipe for that, right? Like you kind of have to look at the model or what you're trying to make and like make a decision because it is a little more work if you go to Clo, mm -hmm. then you have to reduce it because it's like you sit there and you make like a really high res model, right? And then sometimes that may kind of actually feel bad when you bring it back in the blender and try to reducing it right and then you get a little frustrated that you lose a lot of the form that you've created in there and so you're sitting there like fighting to trying to uh trying to preserve what you've made in clo instead of like doing it in blender and just kind of dealing with the limitations that are there right yeah um in building from that it's it's but, just a preference it'll take time i think like it's just um it's like you said, there's no one recipe to go down. It's just, yeah, you, um, yeah. And it seems like both of them would take, I mean, neither one I don't think is very much faster than the other, right? Yeah. Because sometimes it can take a lot. Yeah, it's, if you're trying to look for like speed reduction, it's like both of them are probably going to take the same amount of time, you know, trying to make what you want, right? It's all about like, what you're comfortable with right if you're comfortable with clo and like you can make stuff like amazingly yeah do that and then just reduce it and put it in there but if you're if you're more like a traditional kind of like modeler like you know use blender there's nothing wrong with just doing it that way right right cool thanks for answering ah here we go so this is kind of like the template that i make Ooh, that's got like a bunch of mask stuff it's clear yeah all right so i usually start off with like a template like this right and like this does like a lot of stuff for me like it adds kind of like folds if you can kind of see that um and also none of this is being shaded right now so like this is like the material mode and this is the diffuse mode so the texture actually has like lighting baked into it like when i do um my dcl work so if i start like kind of blowing stuff away oh yeah so usually i'll kind of get rid of this because this is like seam lines and these seam lines are kind of created where the uv borders are so i usually get rid of that what is this yeah it does a little bit of a multiply yeah so you see that like the material i made kind of like starts to make it look a little more dimensional yeah so like you have top lighting for stuff too and then ambient occlusion to kind of add a little more um like it multiplies a little bit based off of like distance between objects and yeah so i'll start working on this and like let's say i like um wanted just one part to be like a color, right? So I create like a masking kind of system and I can kind of come in and pick like where I want stuff to be a certain color, right? And so like I use solid colors to kind of like, you know, figure out 
where I want the different zones to be, right? So with the original model, it would have been just like the skirt, the top, the belt, right? And then I would have like textures I can put on them. So like for here, like this is one of the Stephanie Fung um, protection. I'll use like a triplanar and I would scale this a little bit. So now you get like the pattern here, right? And so anything like I pick from here on, like we'll just take, um, take that texture, right? So now I can start like putting it wherever I want. Or if that's not what I want to use, like I can just go pick another like um, material, right? And so like I kind of run through this right here and that's how I make my, my textures for this. And like usually this is supplied by the fabricant to me and I would use this and kind of just tile it on. Yeah, I think that's mostly everything of what I do. Cool, nice. Uh, so to do a little recap or a little quick tips, uh, we touched on Clo 3D. You worked in Clo 3D. We touched on uh, Blender, Substance Painter. Uh, people can download uh, female and male avatar from the DCL uh, website, right? Also, you find a lot of information about this as well uh, written on the DCL site, but we thought like it's, we can also show it. Um, and uh, maybe um some other quick tips what works well by designing a a, a wearable in uh in the central land and what's absolutely a no-go like what what would it work i know you can go crazy with digital fashion but what how, how far can you go um <laughs> yeah that's a good question um because i am a curator too so i get to see like the other side of what is and isn't allowed <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a lot there's there's a lot of debate among us. It doesn't seem to be a hard and fast rule about stuff. I mean, if you ever get me curating your stuff, like I'm a lot more lenient. <laughs> like so cars. You can't make a car wearable. <laughs> that has been a hot topic. <laughs> or yeah. you can't have a wearable that wears you and that sounds really strange <laughs> but we had it's a, so somebody made like a character that had, had like a backpack right but that backpack was like a mecca and like it was just this giant robot like sitting on your back and yeah. like <laughs> yeah that didn't get approved <laughs> that had to get changed <laughs> And uh, the, that's it, like you can, as long as it like kind of forms like a bipedal character. Oh, yeah, that's another thing like we've kind of outlawed, it, I think, is like if you make like a horse kind of character, like a centaur, so something that has like, no, see, I don't even know if that's true. I mean, I would say try to push the limits and be ready to revise your model, right? <laughs> Because like depending on who you're talking to, like like we'll we'll make the best effort to approve everything, right? Yeah. But like some things kind of break the system, right? And that need to be changed. But if you have something crazy, I mean, give it a try, you know, because people love like weird things. Oh, oh that's right. What what was a big topic was the cockroaches. Somebody <laughs> somebody made a cockroach that was like, yeah. you know, it was really tiny. It was just, so you would get like this, like floating name avatar and just the cockroach just on the floor. Right. And then that started like a cockroach gang. Nice. And, I like it to be honest. <laughs> like, <laughs> but see, that's the problem. It's like, I really like the idea. I would have been yeah. okay with that, but it does break a little bit. Like it's too small and it can kind of be hidden and it doesn't form like a bipedal character. Right. It's just yeah. a little cockroach on the floor. It did get approved. If you can get your hands on one, I think they're pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. But yeah. S so search has begun. Yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Be uh, because um, uh, Pedro, one of our community managers, is uh, has a spider. Uh, where, but that's that's allowed. But a horse is not. I don't know. It's okay. it seems to kind of change every once in a while because like. 
because there's plans to do more with the kind of the central land that need characters to be like bipedal right and like when you get kind of strange stuff like that it can pre- it could break game scenarios mm-hmm. i mean just give it a try like what's the worst gonna happen you got to go back and like re because like you'll never be like locked out of something right like you make it and they say no you gotta change like they'll always tell you like what you can do to change right and it can get approved eventually. Unfortunately, you may have to work a little more. And I know that this is like going back and revising models is kind of a pain in the ass just because like it's not as simple as just kind of like tweaking something. Then you got to go back to UV mapping. Then you got to go back to waiting and then making sure that everything kind of works. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, make some awesome stuff. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. I think that brings on uh, brings us to the to the last topic, and that's when your wearable is finished for you, uh, you can upload it to uh, the central end. Uh, and James, if you can unshare your screen, then I'm gonna. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's me. That's myself. That's not good. <laughs> I don't want to see myself. Uh, and I see myself a lot of times. Give me one sec. I hate to see myself. Um, okay, give me a sec to... I thought I had the video ready. Because um, we made a little uh, recap video of what the process is if you upload it to the central end and how you can um, maybe james you can already start like you know the the process very well but then i'm looking for the, the video real quick and then you can maybe say what what's the first Thing oh yeah you, you do sorry to put you on the spot but then uh... yeah so i mean like the first thing you would do after you have modeled textured and rigged it right um mm-hmm. you would you would select the meshes that you want to export out and you in blender you would export it as a glb or a gltf file and these are kind of um what the central and you know the kind of file that it likes right and then you would go so what is kind of nice about like the central end builder is that you're able to make a collection and kind of test out the stuff that you're working on, right? Without actually having to commit to pay anything yet. So you can sit there and you can keep on revising your model and kind of like seeing what it looks like in the test network. So you can kind of run through like the test network and look around, you know, and see how your character kind of feels in the world, right? And then, you know, once you're finally happy with it, you know, you you publish your item and then it goes into the curation um, phase and the curation nowadays has been a lot faster um, than it previously was like when i was doing it it was like probably like a month wait time now it's you know within a day you'll be able to get somebody to like look at it kind of make sure that the rigging's okay, or the weighting on the bones is okay, texture's okay, polycam's okay, approved thumbnail, right? So if you make your own custom thumbnail, you have to make sure that there's no background in it and that it reflects your um, your wearable correctly, right? Mm-hmm. So like if you if you do like, you know, I'm trying to think of a good example. But like make sure like the thumbnail that you generate like reflects like so so if you make earrings make sure you kind of like close up like on the head and show you know the earrings a hat show the hat don't show like a whole body right oh okay so you're up yeah yeah yeah, i'm up uh also uh, a quick question between what are your expectations in the years for the maximum polygons that will be possible in various popular metaverses this is really a uh, a question for in the future but if you if you look at the the rate of polygons that have changed over the last few years, also it depends per game, right? But um, what what? Yeah, it's um, I think it's gonna go. I think 
I think Decentraland's poly count is um, a little feel. And that's probably just because it runs in a browser, right? Um, there is variants to download, but I think it's, they were trying to negate issues of high poly because it's a web browser. You know, as time goes on, like our browsers get better, our computers get better. And like, like I would see that this going up significantly, I mean, even like VR chat, right? VR chat is basically a metaverse, right? And it's poly count is pretty high, right? Um, I can't remember what it is, but I mean, like a character could be like 50,000 polygons, right? And that's a lot more than what Decentraland one is, right? Decentraland is kind of like PlayStation 2 graphics. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, go. Okay, some technical issues in between, but let's go. So here we have the video. Um, as you can see, this is already in uh, on the Decentraland uh, website and you go to the builder section and here uh, you see actually uh, what uh, the Fabricant wallet has uploaded to um, Decentraland. So here you see the different collections and uh, the next thing what we'll see is the World of Women X Fabricant uh, collection. So if I play it my colleague um, yeah and here you see uh, the different uh, wearables of course uh, the adventure top uh, cabaret corset checkmate cherry tea I personally um, minted the adventure top I really like that one and then we go uh, here so once you upload one specific uh, wearable you see this uh, this menu popping up and here you can really check um, uh, how the wearable is fitting so I'll make it big, big screen it's not possible why can I do it like this theater mode there we go much better um, so you can uh, look uh, at the wearable a little bit closer and here on the right side you can pick your category what the wearable actually is. So what do we see? Skin. Uh, and here on the left, you see uh, the different wearables that you can choose from. And here on the center, obvious, you see the wearable itself on the uh, avatar. And here below, that's already pretty nice that you can already uh, play an emote uh, on, the, uh, on the wearable. On the, on the avatar and then you see how the wearable is moving during that emote because this uh, in this phase you haven't submitted uh, it to the DAO yet so this is uh, still a time that you can uh, check how it looks before you submit it to the DAO uh, there we go and you see the different emojis money shot over there always nice there we go. And more emojis. Oh, also, big emojis. Nice. So uh, when you're done that, you uh, can uh, publish it. Uh, and then you're submitting it to the DAO. So maybe you heard it before. Maybe it's the first time you hear about a DAO. A DAO uh, basically is a decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, of a decentralized, I say decentralized. I mean uh, decentralized. Um, so what does that mean? That the submitting process is not only uh, um, um, uh, being approved by decentralized, but by their community of, as well. So James is one of the people who uh, does the uh, approval. And then basically, if you submit it to the DAO, you get on a forum website, your uh, wearable is posted, and then you get into a chat with that specific uh, person who's going to approve um, your wearable. And then he, she is going to check, hey, does the wearable really fit with the avatar? and give uh, feedback, hey, maybe this needs to approve, that needs to approve. Uh, and when that all is done, then you basically uh, can upload it to Decentraland. Uh, 
Uh, also, another thing to um, notice is that the um, the process costs one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, but I think that's pretty doable because you can eventually also sell your wearables. Um, did I uh, explain it correctly, James? Now, do you have something to add to my uh, yeah. little pros there? Nice, cool. Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate, <laughs> nice. It's good, good to hear. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, then uh, we promised you a, a float. And with that float, uh, when you claim that float, uh, you have access to a special uh, channel in Discord. And that's going to be our uh, uh, the Fabricant Academy uh, channel. Um, we're going to share files in those channels. And we uh, try to, um, yeah, like the Twitch uh, sessions is all about explaining how you can do something. And something is very broad. But then two weeks later, we're going to host also an event in, um, in Discord. And there you can show your process. You can share your screen, show your process, maybe show where you got stuck. And then um, a colleagues of the Fabricant, people from the Fabricant will be in that call and can answer all of your questions. So that's a little bit of the setup that we want to do for the upcoming months. On Twitch, we're going to share how the process goes. And then two weeks later, uh, we do a workshop with you uh, and then you can ask all the questions. So without further ado, enough talking, I will share the float uh, with you now. I will do that in the Twitch chat. And there we go. Uh, there's no password. Uh, just uh, collect the, uh, click on the link, collect the float. And then uh, if you go to our Discord channel, and that's uh, the Fabricant Studio uh, Discord channel. We have a, a specific verification channel. And if you click on verify, then uh, you get verified and then you get a special role in Discord. And then you will see the um, channel that is hidden. So any questions about that, you can ask them here in the chat. Uh, yeah, connect your block to wallet, of course, flow time. Um, so collect your float and definitely, um, if you have any questions, ask them here in the chat or on discord, of course. Cool. I think we managed just over one hour. The aim was one hour. It's pretty cool. Um, now do you want to add anything to, uh, to what has sat in this, uh, stream? No, not really. I think it's um, it's all quite clear. I guess I'm interested to see what people come up with. Honestly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. Okay, uh, then now, James, thank you so much for joining. It was uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. It's really educational. It was really nice uh, to see. Like I I, I watched the uh, the Central and web page, and it's really well explained. But it's also super nice if you can also actually explain with some visuals, right? So uh, that was really cool to see. Also, uh, thank you all people in the chat. Uh, it's, it's so lovely to see uh, like people joining in from all over the world. I saw the US, uh, I saw Asia, I saw every, like every country, like Europe, like every, every part of the world. Uh, it's so great to see. And uh, yeah, really cool. uh, James, can people follow you somewhere? Um, do you want uh, to yeah. promote anything? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I got a Twitter, uh, it's called the, I guess my, my handle is Ducky's King. Ducky's King. Yes. Yeah. Let me, um, yeah. So that's, you want me to send you a link you can drop in? Yeah. Cool. Then I will share it here in the chat. I will also share it on discord. Ducky's King. And can you already uh, tell something about an upcoming project that you kind of do something awesome or is everything classified? Uh... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm working on a, actually a short film right now. Oh. So like it's based off of, like a previous short film and I'm trying to make it better than the other one. I don't really have anything to show for that. 
but it's um it's all in Unreal Engine. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, look forward to that. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm going to be making very many wearables for myself right now because I'm kind of too taxed on doing, you know, wearables for other people. And um, yeah. Sounds cool. Unreal, the future. <laughs> it certainly is. Definitely yeah. the future. There we go. Duck is king. It's, uh, you can find it in the chat. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Also, let me give you one more link. Like, if you want to go look at, you know, the work I've done, like yeah. I have jamesguardstudios.com. Mm -hmm. And I also gave you the link so you can look there. Um, that's the short film in question. There we go. Posted in the Twitch chat, and so when we verify in Discord, we have access to the Special Academy channel. That's correct. Yes, I think Nirmala posted also a video how to do it. Great, cool. Thank you so much, both, and. Uh, until next time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.